Hi, my name is Lucy Patterson. I'm an independent community manager based in Berlin, and I'm one of the co-organizers of a community-run hackathon called Science Hack Day Berlin. Um, it's an annual three-day weekend event um, that brings together scientists, artists, developers, and designers for collaborative projects. We've been running for about five years, um, also hosting regular meetups through the year, once a month, twice a month, um, and we're building a community of peers from different backgrounds that opens up all kinds of possibilities for knowledge transfer. Um, a real focus for us is to open a space for creative collaboration, specifically around cultural um, critical projects, as well as for social innovation or to, to work to build a scientific commons. We've been able to support the growth of an incredible interdisciplinary community in Berlin. And we really think that this kind of approach, so bringing science out of institutions and into independent third spaces, um, creates the conditions for eye level collaboration. And it has the possibility to involve all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds in the process of science. and really makes science disruptively accessible. We've been lucky to find some institutional partners that see the potential in what we're doing, and we've partnered to apply for funding for community-based and co-created co research, but so far we haven't been successful in getting any funding. I think for funding bodies, perhaps understandably, they're quite afraid to fund co-created or emergent projects where the outcomes are not predictable. There's more perceived risk in giving public funds to grassroots communities or NGOs that don't have the reputation of an institution behind them to give trust, um, even though communities like ours really only need a relatively small amount of money to operate. We're talking probably tens of thousands rather than hundreds of thousands, or maybe even less. Um, but the administrative mechanisms for funding at that level just don't really exist. And the other big issue, maybe you can call it ignorance, um, it's the idea that, that anything relevant or interesting could take place outside of an institution um, is having a hard time getting traction. It shows perhaps in, even in the retitling of this session, we submitted um, with the title, uh, basically looking at how hacker and maker culture and research meet, and it's been retitled to how hacker culture can improve research, so the focus being on institutional research. Also, I'm sending my contribution for this session as a recording, as I don't have an institutional expenses budget to cover the cost of the trip or the registration fees. And there are more people like me. I'm going to meet some of them today in the rest of this session. The other major challenge we have to deal with is, um, unfortunately, co-option from institutional science communication and citizen science projects. Um, participatory approaches are really the latest hype, and the institutions are well-placed to apply for funding. Um, they often reach out to us to partner on applications. However, rather than partner with us seriously, we're often asked to be a community partner, um, which is a role that comes without funding, more often than not. Um, it's unfortunate that this kind of intense care style work that we do to build community, community management is, is always undervalued in these contexts. This is similar to the co-option or remaking of tools and projects from, from the hacking scene as citizen science or also in maker education, so open source hardware devices. It capitalizes on the openness of the scene and extracts from it. Institutions often call in very large grants to study or develop um, hacker approaches, hacker and maker approaches, but nothing from that goes back to those who originally developed the ideas. This kind of gentrification, institutionalization of our work is undermining what we do inside our civic communities. And really, as far as we're concerned, the medium is the message. If the institutions are the only players doing this kind of work, then we're not disrupting anything. We're missing a really great opportunity to make science genuinely more open and more equitable.